15, as we just saw in big air. And you can see Moto X best trick warming up behind me. Now, the double backflip left an impression not just on action sports, but on the world of sports as a whole. And of course, it left an impression on its perpetrator, Mr. Travis Pastrana. Three years ago, same mindset, and here he is. But you'd be surprised on what the memories that are in his head are right now and what they're fueling him to do tonight. I remember the smell. I remember you know, the person in the fifth row. I remember exactly everything. When I did the double backflip that day, I have never been more clear in my entire life. And that, some people climb Everest for it, some people bungee jump, some people skydive. I compete. Does it take your breath away? Now, I'm warming up with five double backflips every morning just to like, kind of, kind of wake up. My Subaru teammate, Dave Mira, is, is the only reason that I'm back on, on the motorcycle. He convinced me that it was really easy to do his uh, really cool trick. And, and every single time that I come to a rally, that's all he talks about is like, I see you're just going to you know, wait until someone else does it when you know you can be the first. And uh, me, as a competitive, bad loser, kind of poor sport guy, I couldn't keep taking that, that abuse. And after about six months of working on this trick, it, it's morphed into some kind of weird, spinny, flippy thing. The sport has progressed so far. I call it the toilet paper roll because you just kind of throw everything in the air, flip it, spin it, and it's been landing close to the wheels. I'm about one for five, which is about how I was with the double back. Going into X Games this year, it's about normal. Hurt, tired, underprepared, and overenthusiastic. And if I, I don't make it through best trick, I hope uh, the doctors can uh, at least duct tape me back together well enough to put me in the car, and uh, I'm still going to go for rally, so it's, it's going to be a good time either way. Well, we will see if he will put it down tonight, but he's not the only rider interested in gold in Moto X Best Trick. Staples Center is loaded and pumped. Let's meet the riders with our live announcer, Mr. Eric Apple. X Games 15, Los Angeles. Are you ready to meet the riders of Moto X Best Trick? An X Games rookie who's become a sensation with a never seen before trick. Bringing one of the most anticipated maneuvers to Staples Center tonight at a Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. It's Willie Watts! A three-time X Games medalist who was never afraid to lay it all on the line. He took a bronze last year in best trick with the scariest looking jump in the sport, the ruler backflip. From the ranks of the metal militia in Temecula, his name is Todd Potter! He's looking to capture his second X Games medal. This Aussie is the inventor of the cliffhanger backflip. And he's 25 years old, looking to blow the roof off the Staples Center tonight. Say hello to the man they call Bilko, Blake Williams. This 28-year-old native of France has blown apart the European FMX scene alongside his brother. He's also a Moto X Championship silver medalist. Make some noise for Charles Pages. This gold medalist in the Moto X Championships has the double backflip in his pocket. Will he bring that success to X Games 15? LA, say hello to Scott Murray. He is an unknown 28-year-old from Minnesota with a trick that could shake up the FMX world. Will he be the Cinderella story of X Games 15? We're about to find out. Say hello to Paris, Rosen!
This rider owns 14 X Games medals, of which nine are gold. He won Rally Car at X Games last year, and he's back in Moto X Best Tricks for the first time since X Games 12. LA, get loud and lose your mind for the number 199, Travis Basarada. The two-time defending and current reigning X Games gold medalist. He shocked the world each of the last two years with the Volt and the Electric Doom. What in the world will we throw down in 2009? He's 23 years old from Tribuco Canyon and his name is Kyle Loza! To call the energy in the Staples Center electric, an understatement. Travis Pastrana looking to make history yet again. Moto X best trick coming up. Don't go any. Are you kidding me? Oh! How many times can you find the Holy Grail in one building? Staples Center has been the witness of so many great feats here at the X Games. Unbelievable feats to be true. Will we see it again tonight? Well, Travis Pastrana is in the house, the number 199, so familiar to the X Games over these last 11 years. Just 11 years ago, Travis Pastrana bringing freestyle motocross gold at San Francisco in 1999. Tonight, X Games 15, Moto X best trick. Eight competitors, one of them Travis Pastrana, one of them your gold medalist from last year, Kyle Loza, and another gold medalist from years past and best trick will not be competing. He will be joining us in the booth. That's right, Cameron Steele here alongside me, Tess Sewell, and Brian Deegan, the man who first stomped the 360 and brought home the gold medal in best trick in 2003. Right now, though, a rider that has never been to the X Games, never ridden a competition as far as I know. None of us had met him until today. Tess, Willie Watts, what's the story? From Broken Arrow outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and he has a brand new trick never seen before. And that wasn't it. Maybe he's gonna hold it until the second round. Now that, once you go off the ramp, that counts as your jump. So hopefully he understands that. So we're going right up to the next rider. That, or hey, this is the world's biggest stage in freestyle motocross. Brian, you've done this before. How is the pressure? When, I mean, first time guy, are you surprised you didn't throw a trick? Really surprised. Tons of pressure right there. If it was me, I would have laid the trick down the first run because if you mess up, you have another chance. He must be pretty confident he's going to nail it next time around. Well, actually, I saw him today. He looked pretty nervous. So, But nerves are definitely not something that the uh, next gentleman up is going to have. What do you think, Cameron? Definitely not. Todd Potter from the Metal Militia, one of your boys, Brian, he took down... Ricky Carmichael and James Stewart in best whip last night for the gold and see what he's got. Woohoo! Now, innovation is key in best trick. We have seen this from Todd Potter. We have seen this from Bilko. In fact, Todd got a medal doing that trick in the past. So, Brian, the judges are looking at that. I mean, a great trick, great execution, great extension, but that's not what the judges are looking for overall. No, that was a great trick, great extension, but that trick is old, and that's the problem with best trick. you got to come in with something new. He might be saving himself for freestyle. All right, well, we have some rookies that will be bringing new things, but we've already seen one rider fail to do any trick whatsoever. Ever. What, whether he was uncomfortable or just holding it, I'm not sure, but that was a great trick that for was, Potter. Uh, and you know what? You're saying great extension. That was fantastic. Fantastic extension. We've seen a lot of those no-handed jackhammers, but I mean that was unbelievable. Todd with the tongue skills. You saw him there. He uh, was throwing the LA on the back of his pants. LA, but with Lusk attitude in memory of Jeremy Lusk who passed away this year, freestyle motocrosser. And Todd showing you there some images of tattoos that Jeremy had. And there is the score coming in in 83.40. 
a moderate score, but not something that's going to be in the playbook, I don't think. Well, here we have the next guy up, Bilko, Blake Williams, and he is absolutely going to rip this one. Take a look. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Now, Brian. <laughs> that was sweet. In case you're wondering what you just saw, you just saw a 360 with a downside Indian Air can can. Brian, you invented the 360. You and Travis Pastrana throwing it. Listen to the crowd, they dig it. You guys threw it the first time ever the same night. How hard is the 360? I mean, really not a lot of riders doing it. Let's take a look. Watch the downside, no footed can Indian. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Are you blown away? That was awesome. 360, so technical in itself. For him to throw the Indian air in the middle, that's commitment. He definitely threw it down. Look how he's poking the feet down. That's Great awesome. extension. Wow. Here's the thing traditionally. The judges haven't really been big rewarders of a 360, which we've seen time and time again. But Philco has the cleanest 360 in 88. My money says that was worth more than an 88 test. I think the judges are a little soft, but when you're early, when yeah. you're early in the it's, run, it, it's going to cost it's you. It's so tough to come in and for the judges to judge you early. This thing, though, this is going to be innovation right here. And so the little brother competed last year, Thomas Pagez. This is Charles Pagez from France. He's got a front flip or possibly a decade air. Let's watch, people. So coming in really slowly, Pagez using the super kicker ramp, 44 feet, <laughs> the crowd giving him the applause. Always so dangerous to land on the side of your motorcycle because of the foot peg that's sticking up, but evidently he missed that. So he's got trick triple clamps that lets the bar spin around. Let's take a look. This is the decade brought to you from the BMX world. He just it looks like the bar released late on him. It looks like he didn't get the release of the bar. Let's take another look. Oh, he had the rotation there. It's just the bar looks like it got stuck. It's hung up there. He had it all the way around, Brian. Yeah, he's coming around trying to click the bars back in. There's a stopping point in the bars. He didn't make it all the way around. He ended up on the side of his bike. That was a, it was a good try, but he's got another chance. And it looks like he landed on the foot peg, but he's all right. Some of the other freestyle guys say he's nuts, but he's always willing to hang it out. Not a great score, but this guy, holy hats on your hats and glasses. He's been wearing a wire for us all day long, and let's find out what Mr. Pastrana's been talking about and to whom, because it looks crazy. Best trick is what we're heading for right now, and I've been trying to think about best trick as, as little as possible and yet think about it as much as possible. I haven't done one good since I've been here, but I figure, like, I'm just gonna... You can get to your wheels off? Sometimes. <laughs> All I need is one, right? Yeah. Track walk, 09. You know, I, I, I was... Just don't do anything that you don't think you're gonna... Pull. One foot back from there. Well, I'm gonna get, I get a couple practice runs. So I'm just going to hit it exactly like I'm going to hit it in the event, and I'll know where I hit, and then we'll go from there. Yes, Daniel Dares trying to go for the three-peat. So is Kyle Loza here tonight, but you see Travis Pastrana. He is back after a couple years off since doing the double backflip. It is going nuts here inside the Staples Center. This is what announcer dorks look like, or at least Tess and Cameron. This is Brian Deegan, a 10-time X Games medalist. And hey, we've got competition going on. It's going to be unbelievably awesome. Scott Murray has been to the last couple X Games with a double backflip. He has not been able to put it to the dirt and claim any hardware. Brian, is tonight any different for Murray as he gets ready to go? I think this is it. Double backflip, he's talking about a combo. We'll see what goes down. A bit off access. Went wrong coming off the lip right there. It looked almost like a underflip taken off. Yeah, the problem he had last year, he was all sideways when he was taking off. The amazing thing is Scott Murray does double backflips, he crashes them, and he just gets right back up. And he's angry. He's a tough guy. 
and that's what the sport needs. Running number eight, that was his dad's baseball number, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take a look back. He had the rotation, but you can see maybe when he pulled off the ramp, he started a little bit of a twist. Midway through, Brian, it looks like he's crossed up a bit. That's it. When you're coming around and you're trying to find the landing, you start getting sideways when you flip like that. You're, you're trying to spot the landing, and that sometimes throws you into a sideways flip. Well, you could see as soon as he was off the ramp there, he actually pulled on the bars, and he pulled the bars sideways. And You said this before, Brian. When you do these flips, although the bike and the rider are, are heavy, just a slight movement of the head can cause you to go sideways. Well, I can tell you, he was a little bit off kilter back there before the competition. His front wheel was missing from his bike and he thought it was a joke but I think someone was just putting a new tire on it but he was definitely in a mental frame where he needed to be in that mental perfection and right now you can see 0 for 3 is just not a cool place to be he's got one more shot everybody gets two runs and right now Potter's layup of a trick isn't looking like a bad idea I mean he's still in second place Bilko with an epic 360 downsided Indian air but all that could be surpassed right now Paris Rosen, Minnesota, don't know a thing about him, but I know there's a front flip coming. Ladies and gentlemen, check it out. Woo. Oh, almost. Now, ladies and gentlemen, of course, we've said it time and time again, we see big slams at the X Games, and all action sports events, these athletes push themselves sometimes beyond what I think is a sensible limit. First time he's ever trying to put this trick to the dirt. He's only done it in the foam pit. The thing that I always say about this, Brian, maybe you can let us know. The crowd cheering, they see him moving around down there. Going to the foam pit is one thing, but the whole foam pit is 13 feet tall. When you get to this and the landing is dropping away from you and it's a steep drop away landing, it's got to be hard for these guys doing their trick the first time ever to the dirt. For sure. Going into a foam pit is a little easier because you get the rotation wherever you're at. When you're on a dirt landing that's steep, you have to time it just right. So coming into this, I'm sure he's guessing it a little bit what was going to happen. He almost had it. And one thing to point out, last year Jim DeChamp trying the same trick. He threw the bike away when I think he was going to come in maybe even better than what we just saw there from Paris. And I think the smart thing is you hold on to the motorcycle. Well, you know, the margin for error in that front flip become, you know, between going under rotation, over rotation seems so small, like a 360. And because he'd never tried this with that drop away landing, it's such a slow rotation. And it looks like Dr. Susan McGowan is helping him to his feet. How tough are these guys? Yeah. Travis Pastrana. One more time, put your hands together for Travis. Talk about icing you a little bit. You know, you ice the kicker by taking timeouts. The crowd with a big round of applause there. Debbie Pastrana is very antsy. This is Travis's mother and uh, some of Travis's support group nearby. Now, we know that Travis is always willing to throw down. And Travis has to watch another rider crash right before he's getting ready to innovate a new trick, Brian. Where does that put your mindset? As a rider, that's the hardest thing. You're watching guys hit the mat. You're like, is that going to be me? So, Let's take a look. It looks like he just didn't get the pop right out of the gate. He almost brought it around. Luckily, he landed on that wheel and rode it for a while before he went to the dirt. Front flip, 75 feet. That is a huge commitment. Well, he was slow when he started that rotation. Ends up bouncing on that back tire and lucky, I think, to slide out down the landing. Actually, a softer man, landing. That was awful. And there he is, <laughs> smiling. Wow. Maybe we'll see him back in the oh, second man. round. Travis Pastrana being goaded into this possibly by Dave Mira of BMX fame. We just saw him trying to throw similar style tricks. Some people call it the 720. Aaron, what's going on down there? Well, guys, Travis Pastrana has enormous natural abilities and technical skills, and he's very creative. But this time, he needed a little additional help in order to perform this rodeo 720. He actually hired an Olympic aerial gymnast to help him out, Coach Frank Barr, 50 years old, and they taught him how to use his core muscles more so than using 
Molina's upper body strength. Before he was using his neck, his biceps, his triceps, he said it's all in the hips. He took him from going rotating from 540 degrees to about 700 degrees. He learned the additional 20 degrees all on his own by his mother. Debbie Pastrana is biting her nails right now behind us. I'm biting my nails. Are you kidding me? Thank you, Aaron Bates, with that report. Two times more X Games medals than the entire rest of the field. The course is he's riding a 125, 36 foot jump at 60 degrees. Let's watch, people. Mom hopping over the barrier. Yeah. And Travis Pastrana, always willing to lay it out on the line, always innovating all the way back to 1999, the first time we saw the X Games. Big impact for Travis. And it looked like uh, they're all clapping. That would generally mean that Travis has said something funny or positive. Well, down the there. thumbs up coming from Travis while he's lying on the ground. That's uh, this kid is amazing. I mean, the, the things he attempts, the things he actually achieves. And let's remember, he's a former national champion. He's done a lot on the motorcycle, the 125, which he's riding here tonight. It looked to me, I only saw it the one time live. But it looked like he started the rotation so fast and it started to get away from him, Brian. Yeah, I was talking to him earlier. He said the main thing is I have to slow up the rotation right off the bat, which is crazy because it is a 720. They're cheering him. Travis is giving us a bit of a push up. Oh, wow. Iron Man. Let us not forget, Brian, that. And he wants to run up the hill to salute he's, the crowd. He's going to claim it. Oh, man. This guy earns the, the respect. Guy, the guy has the worst knees out of any human I've ever seen. Brian Deegan from the booth throwing Travis Pastrana the horns. You guys will be going head-to-head -head in Rally X on Sunday. You guys, I know you were out on the course today on the asphalt portion. Travis with a huge hit, but you, ne you never discount Travis from coming back. Don't just nothing with Travis. Well, now we think, oh, he's leaving. The medical guy's going to say, please don't get back on the bike. But Travis is going to be so frustrated with that. All right, Aaron Bates is caught up with the man himself. Aaron, what's going on? Well, guys, Travis Pastrana is definitely winded right now. Travis, go big or go home. You laid it all on the line. You did this for the fans. Yeah. I had this dialed a week ago. I just, I really want to thank, you know, everybody that backed me for two, two years, literally, I've been working on this trick. Guys, thank you for the support. My bum hurts. I'm not going to lie. You're limping away right now, but we know Travis Pastrana. Is there any possibility that we might see you come out for a second run? I don't know. I got to see that. I haven't been able to land that trick in two weeks, but I thought it was just because it was a different ramp. I, I, I really thought I, I had it. I, I thought mentally it was good. It took off, felt good. I got about halfway, and I was like, I'm not even close. This is going to suck. A true warrior. Thanks for coming out. Travis Pastrana, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I think nothing more. We should take a look back, a few replays of what was an attempted 720. Travis Pastrana, 38 foot, 36 foot to 38 foot takeoff. Let's take a look, Brian. I don't think he got the twist he wanted originally, and then he ends up with the under rotation of the twist and not coming around in the flip sequence. It almost looked like he missed both the flip and the twist. He definitely didn't come in flat enough. He was going like a double backflip. And see, the bike isn't flat enough right here. And this is probably where he started thinking, all right, what's going to happen when I land? And he came in flat, laying the bike over. And that's what happens when you don't get it flat enough off the takeoff. I think he was hoping that he could muscle that smaller bike, that 125 around. But really, it kind of it slid out from underneath him. Take a look at this. The bike kind of goes the wrong way, where we saw him land with the bike really upright as soon as that back wheel started spinning underneath. 
underneath him. He was done. It looked like he just didn't get the twist right away. You saw his body accentuate to the side. Presence of mind to gas at midair to try to bring it around. You saw the puff of smoke there coming out of the exhaust, a two-stroke motorcycle. In fast motion, Brian, I can't even imagine trying to sight and figure out where you're at, but he had the presence of mind to know where he's at. Well, the good thing is he knew where he was at. He adapted to it. And <laughs> Debbie, his mom, definitely doesn't like it. Let's take a look at what Travis thought when you watched the replay. Yeah, I concur. Ooh. <laughs> Now, his crew said he's jumping about 40 feet and going 40 feet high. So the landing ramp is 14 feet tall. So you can do the math. Basically dropped from 26 feet if I did the math right. But hey, you never know. I'm from San Clemente, right? <laughs> That's a joke. You guys are supposed to laugh. I'm trying to lighten it up a little bit around here. So they got to adjust that takeoff ramp yet again because so many guys are using this short kicker ramp, but they're using it at different distances. It's kicked up. It's actually got a whole mess. Metal wedge underneath there for Pastrana. They have to set it down on the ground now for Mr. Yeah. Kyle Loza. Now, Kyle Loza is not afraid of gold medals. He has two of them back to back. He's looking to three peak tonight. How much does it unsettle him having to see his ramp move around and Travis just had it up on a wedge? I mean, you got to think about that a little bit, Brian. Yeah, you have to have confidence in the guys pushing the ramps around. It's changed so much from the first best trick when it was one ramp. Now the guys are doing tricks of all different ramps, and when you got to set that ramp just perfect. When you're at X Games, you just have to go for it. Hey, guys. Don't forget, log on to Facebook.com forward slash X Games for behind the scenes footage or check out Twitter.com forward slash ESPN X Games to get the latest updates. You guys know what to do. Just type it in, check out the Twitter, check it all out because you know what? You get good behind the scenes dirt on what's really happening and what's really, what's really going on because Sometimes the announcers just lie to you, right, Tess? Ah, nah. Nah. Uh, that's not something we would ever do. Okay. Serious moment. Kyle Loza is an innovator. He is a guy that really has the skill and the ideas, the forethought. Let's take a look at what he's done over the last couple years. Kyle Loza, another first timer in X Games, bringing a new trick, the full. Will he pull it off? 45-footer. Whoa! Well, he managed to pull it. Kyle is an innovator of big trick. Let's take a look. Here he goes. Oh, he's got it all day oh. long. No! What? He went into the tunnel. See you later. He'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's how Loza did it last year. A little off course excursion, but the judges said, hey, he landed it. If he wasn't in the confines uh, of this, he would have, he would have been. Here we go. Yes. Oh, yes. Negative, Ghost Rider. Oh. The pattern is full. Does this play into the fact that they just moved his ramp? If I was caught, I'd say, hey, you just moved my ramp. I want a, I yeah. want a shot at it. You want to come and test it. But, you know, he was looking for that. But that looked like the trick from, uh, you know, last year. It didn't look like he was going for something new. Talking to Dan McGranahan, who's his agent there, I know that they've been plotting thick as thieves on these things. Now, lots of work going on on the jump itself right now. I think they're just moving it, though. Back to Willie Watts' position. And you can see him checking it to be stable. So Kyle Loza goes off the ramp and doesn't get a trick. There's a lot of, lot of chaos going on here. This is Travis's bike. And I would say with Ron and the boys out there working so hard on it, that they're probably thinking that they're going to go back out. You see, I don't know, they put in another new, uh, maybe a different FMF pipe set up there. You see it there? I think they need They're one. tearing it off. Yeah, it looks a little bent up. I think everything looks bent up, the fender, the subframe. But, I mean, when you throw your motorcycle away like that, Brian. Yeah, he got away pretty clean, actually. And I was surprised he's riding a 125. Usually guys ride 250s in this class. It must be because it's lighter, and he can throw it around easier. You threw class out. That's like old school racing days. <laughs> old school Suzuki. <laughs> So the top of the ramp right now, Willie Watts from Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. He has a burial where he goes vertical. It's a bar hop. He shoves the feet through. 
Backflips over the bike. But he did nothing in his first jump. This is it, all or nothing, people. Check it out, first time ever at X. Yeah. Is that a second? Is that a hoax? That it. No. That's it, right? I think Willie Watts just decided to back out of that thing because he just wasn't feeling it. He was really, really nervous today. And that's going to be it. That's run two of two for Watts. What I'm asking you is, do you think he ever had the trick? I mean, has he put it to dirt? I'm, I'm serious. I mean, no, there's I a lot of things that have been done into foam pits that have never been done onto dirt. We just saw Travis Pastrana not do it, but he was convinced he could do it. Maybe Willie just thought, hey, I don't have it. As a rider, you're coming to X Games to do your trick, whether you crash or not. You can see Pastrana do it. He's going for it. Whether he crashes or not, he's putting on the show. I think the guy uh, really just backed out last minute. That wasn't really what a rider should have done. All right, so we clowned Potter a little bit for throwing something old, but guess what? We're already in the second runs, and he is still in silver medal, medal position, Tess. That was a smart move on Potter's part. I mean, and it was an incredible trick, so no disgrace for him. Oh! Oh! Yeah! Good save! Yeah, with the coffin, no hander. That was the save of the day, right there. You see too many guys crash. He's like, I ain't crashing. Well, I think the funny thing is everybody moved onto that side of the landing because Kyle Loza crashed the other way last year, but nowhere is safe here in the Staples Center when Moto is in the house. Do you get points for saving it? That was a brilliant save. Now you call it the coffin backflip. No hand leans all the way back. Fully committed when he's coming around, the bars are turning on him. That's the worst thing that could happen as a rider. Bars turn on you, you have to find them last minute. But that was a great save. And look at this. Todd Potter's on top of the landing, but Travis Pastrana's walking back into the stadium. Let's do the trust. Potter's, Potter's going to pass out some hardware. Let us not forget, Potter is going huge here, and he's riding in the freestyle competition tomorrow. He's one of 16 riders. Uh, we got to watch the bar twisting in this replay here, because that, I think, is what went really wrong. He deserves a 10 for the save. Hello! Oh. And he pulls it together. Now, just like Loza last year, if there was nothing there, he would have ridden out of it. Ridden right out of it, hand in the air. I think he did a great job, actually. Well, hey, here's the thing. The judges look gave at that. Look at that extension. Wow. The judges gave it to Loza last year, even though he rode through the barricade. So I would say, I mean, the, the precedent is there. They have to give it to him. They won't. They <laughs> took a beating from some of us last year for... You know, some of us said that that was a crash last year. Head to the fender. That's the first time I've ever seen him do that, or anyone do that. First time ever at X. No big surprise. But come on, seriously, Tess. Does he have a shot at beating his other score, beating Philco? Oh, Does absolutely. he get a completed jump it. on this? He completed, completed it. it. He, his, he was on the brakes. You could see the brakes were fully locked on, but there was no way to stop in that space. I'm giving it to him. Potter has changed his whole routine. He's got his own jump park. Pre-run, he was second. Nope. Whoa. I told you the judges weren't going to give it to him. Oh, man. Is that a double standard? Well, hey, who am I to say? But, I mean, last year, Kyle Loza rode through whatever space was there. This time... Maybe they're being. Maybe they told the guys they couldn't do that this time. Ah, we may have missed that in the you know in the riders' briefing. So that's tough. I mean, that was a fantastic trick. Bilko bringing the heat to no. -hander. Was that the late no hander? Well, I'm I'm not sure that that was the cheater no hander. It was late. But I think he got him off before he landed. We'll have to watch the replays. In the past, ladies and gentlemen. Gotta give him credit, that was a good trick. The crowd loves it. Some of the riders used to take their hands off after the fact, after they're already on the bike, but it's so hard for the judges and people to process. It just looks like a no-end lander. So Tess, are you calling that he took him out post post landing or just really close? Well, I just couldn't see what happened as he was coming down there. He threw those hands up in the air though, so he was claiming it. No doubt. A great cliffhanger backflip. Look how early he's committed. Whoa. Big extension. Here's the question. Are the hands off before he touches? Oh, it was a little did far. He, did he pull a no-legger in the middle here? Watch. 
That's Brian D. Oh my, that is a thing of beauty right there. How soon he's committing. He's already getting back on the bike while he's upside down. He's too far over the bars. That's what took him a long time to take his hands off. He's nose high. He oh, gets the he hands it. off before he lands, but still a little suspect. A little sneaky cheater style there because he's already clearly getting back to the dirt. Yes They're, or no, Brian? Yeah, for sure. They're getting uh, real picky on these styles of these landings here, so I could say uh, that probably deducted some points. All right, so he was leading going into that. His run number two will not improve his position because he's already leading, but it won't give him any more points there. So let us not forget Travis Pastrana has entered back into the building. Kyle Loza is still yet to go, our two-time gold medals. Check it out. Pastrana going for the 720, uncorking it, going to the rear end, not happy, but knowing Travis, he will be back. Don't go far away. Moto X best trick continues. Live from Los Angeles, X Games 15 is brought to you by... Welcome back inside the Staples Center. The crowd is going nuts. X Games 15, Moto X best trick. Travis Pastrana currently sitting in third with a crash. And just moments ago, he went for the 720. This is how it all went wrong. Not quite getting it all the way around, decking it. And after that, he walked into the TV truck. He wanted to see what the replays looked like. He wanted to see what he did wrong. So while we're on live TV, Travis is doing research, which is all right because, you know, he's Travis Pastrana, and all things are good here at X, and we want to see him push the sport, and, of course, we don't want to see him crash. Right, he was trying to figure out what it was he could do and change that trick so he can land it. Well, we'll see if he can move it all together and get it right. In there with the bosses. Wow, the big bosses yeah, kicking right there. Him out. He's kicking That's him right. out. It looked like it. And this is our leader, Bilko Blake Williams from Australia. Now, you remember, Bilko was hurt recently. He's been kind of hiding out in Australia, not showing people what he's got. I love absolutely love his downside Indian Air 360 no foot of can and it yeah, looks see. like Travis you got it right, is it right here no it's right here maybe yeah, thanks, not sure if he's putting on or taking off the gear yeah I'm gonna, it has I'm been rumored gonna go. that he is going to come back out and ride which of course we would not doubt with Travis so we'll wait and find out maybe Aaron can get us an update on that, but right now the guy that's been trying to get oh, a double backflip at X Games, this is his third year so far. He's not ridden out of it. We have seen him ride out of it in the past. He has won other events with this trick. Is now the time, Brian? I think so. I think he can pull it off. I know he's landed quite a few of these. He just got to focus right now, concentrate, block out the crowd, and just go out and do what he knows how to do. Coming from Michigan, the only comp that we have seen him ride at, only comp he's ever ridden at, is X Games and the Moto World Championships. Let's see if he gets the double back. Come on, buddy. And the good news is Scott Murray is up. That was close. That time, it didn't look like he was really off access. He, he was trying, I think. He was probably too aggressive the first time, which twisted that bar around on the takeoff. This time, he was trying to dial it down a little bit. And coming up short in a double backflip, though, Brian, is, is almost the most scary thing that can happen. Yeah, he gets out of it pretty good. And I think he just rolled right out of it. Well, I think we should take another look and find out what went wrong. Another crash here. He twisted off the uh, face again. Yeah. Pulling hard on that bar. Now maybe, can he compensate for that, Brian, by going a little harder into the jump, possibly, instead of pulling so hard at the end? Yeah, if you don't have enough speed coming into a ramp, you used your arms to yank it back to get the rotation. He may have came in too slow. You know who was a classic bar turner, backlift rider? Kenny Bartram, who had who has won this event. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, the he won one, the yes. very first best trick. He always had that classic problem. On the throttle side, he didn't pull as hard as he did on the opposite side, and it looks kind of like the same thing with Murray. It's amazing how fast you drop in that second flip, too. Once you reach that peak, you just fall down to earth. 
And it's not really going to be much of a difference for Murray one way or the other. He's in the 50 range. 51 was his first run. He leaves X Games dejected once again. Very tough right now. Williams, Potter, and Pastrana with the crash sitting in the third place. And for more on Travis Pastrana, let's check in with Aaron. Well, guys, I just caught up with Travis Pastrana, and he did ring his bell pretty hard. His vision is extremely blurred right now, and he said that's why he's not going to be coming back out here to make his second attempt. He did, however, say that the pressure of the crowd is what pulled him through, and that's exactly why he wanted to come back out here and do this. Kyle Lowe's, on the other hand, not happy at all with his very first attempt. He said he missed practice earlier this afternoon, so he considered that one his practice run, and this is going to be the real deal. He said coming out here, his priorities have changed having a family now, but that he is on and he wants that third gold medal. Gotcha, Aaron. Thank you so much. And let me fast forward for everybody at home. We may have seen Paris Rosen in this position, but he is not running due to a crash. We would have seen Travis Pastrana here. He is not running. Our last rider going for his three-peat, Kyle Loza. Right now, it's Bilko in the lead, followed by Potter. And Pastrana sitting in metal contention with that big crash. All the world's on Loza. He has not disappointed us at Best Trick. This is his specialty. He doesn't ride freestyle competitions. He doesn't do backflips. He does innovation. That's what Kyle Loza does. Well, and he has done some innovative tricks the past couple of times out here at X. Can he three-peat, though, here? We saw a practice run, and it looked like he was going for the same kind of trick he did last year. Is he going to be innovative this year? I think he's got it. All he has to do is land this trick, and he's going to have a gold medal. The other guys are playing a conservative. It's all or nothing right here. Lay it down, Loza. Three-peat attempt, people. Got it. Got it. Oh! <laughs> he went the right way that time. into the stand, the neck brace into the stand. If he throws the monster helmet in the stand, people are going to lose their minds. Uh, I thought he was taking it off. I think that neck brace is like $1,000. That was awesome. They're all wrestling had, over it over here. All he had to do was land that trick, and that was good. He pulled it. One hand off the bars when he landed, rode it out. Kyle might be a helmet collector. I know you're a helmet collector, yeah. right, Brian? You never throw the helmets out. Kyle never. Loza bringing the heat at best trick. Let's check it out. Now, innovation is supposed to be the payoff. Although he did a great trick, it's the same trick he's done before. It is the same trick he's done before, so the innovation wasn't there. But I think, it's like Brian said, it's such a huge trick. I agree, it's a huge trick, but Bilko did a trick that's never been seen before. Very true. And so Kyle is off access with his body, but Bilko is spinning the bike around, and while he's doing that, he's stopping motion, throwing his feet straight down. I mean, I always say the judges disrespect the 360. Kyle loses the man, but he brought a trick we've seen before. Here's Bilko watching on. Bilko should take it. Deegan. Look. Uh, Twitch, yeah, Twitch said Twitch you, got, says a you gold. got a gold. Yeah. Twitch agreeing you got to do something new and different. I concur as well, but hey, the five judges, the head judge, Regis Harrington, has been around since 2001. He is a former jumper, super possibly right. knows what's going on. It's going to be up to the judges. The question is, will he win? I say no. Tess? I'm Second. saying no. Whoa! Oh, there it oh, is! Oh, man! 89-2-0. about that one. I think uh, innovation is key here. And I think Kyle is a little surprised. One of the nicest guys you will ever meet. Ladies and gentlemen home, do not take what we are saying as disrespect. We are analyzing what is new, what is fresh, what these riders, what the core of this is about. And we felt 
We have been told by the judges they're going to reward innovation. So that is the thing that this guy here, Bilko, Blake Williams, we thought he had the innovation here tonight. He really did bring it. But Rosa was rewarded for a big trick. Unbelievable. I mean, a great performance by Loza, but it is a trick we saw before, but the execution, the innovation. Let's take a look at what Blake Williams, Bilko, as we call him, watch the motorcycle go 360 degrees and watch him stop and take his legs off. Actually, this is the other trick Bilko threw. So Bilko, hands off there on the landing. That was his secondary score. This is Loza's jump, pops through the bars, flips his hand upside down and flips his body up and over. And look at that, the left hand came off the bars, he landed, he was really lucky to actually bring that thing to a stop. And that, once again, an unbelievable moment for Kyle Loza. The judges loved it, let's check in with Aaron. Three years in a row he pulls off this gold medal. Kyle Loza, your expression says it all. The fans are going crazy. The crowd's going nuts. How did, deep did you have to dig to pull this off tonight? Uh, I, I had no, I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get it off the ramp. Like, I only jumped that ramp four times ever. That was the scariest thing in my entire life, almost, besides the last two years. So, X Games is pretty gnarly. You were having second thoughts coming in tonight. What made you pull it together and come back out and do it again? Um, yeah, I, I kind of flaked out and missed practice, and um, it kind of bit me in the butt, and now, I don't know, it just worked out. I'm like speechless. That was, that was, I don't even know what to say. Congratulations to you. Kyle Loza, the first three-peat here at X Games this year. Congratulations to Kyle Loza and all of our medalists. And just a quick note, Todd Potter taking home the bronze, and he was going to give his spot up earlier today at one point because he didn't think he had the trick to get on the podium. I guess he was wrong. It was a really good idea to have a little chat with Potter and remind him he just needed to stay in here. So Potter laying it down for bronze. Bilko getting that silver and Loza the gold again. What an awesome night at X Games once again. Good night from Los Angeles. Day two is complete. Join us tomorrow at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, for day three of X Games 15 on ABC and later at 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 Pacific. Sports Center is coming up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in action sports. For more, log on to xgames.com for Tess Sewell, Brian D, and Aaron Bates, and everybody here at the X Games, including our good buddy Sal Masakela and all of our gold medal winners, including Kyle Loza. We're saying see you later. We'll see you tomorrow here at X Games 15.